Si Guru Tatwa, Part 1 The Abode of Pure Devotion The Lotus Spirit of Sri Guru Sri Guru Charana Patma Ki Balabakati Satma Banda Mui Sabarana Sane Tara Prasade Bhai Eva Bhattari Yajai Krishna Prabhti Hoya Hoyte Carefully, I prize the lotus feet of my Sri Guru that are the only abodes of pure devotion. O oh, brother, mind, by His grace you will cross the ocean of material existence and attain Krishna. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Tika by He Brata Manaha Sudha Kanika Vyakya by Sri Ananta Babadas Babaji Maharaj in the beginning of this book, Srila Thakur Mahasaya glorified the principle of Sri Guru, who is the root cause of all accomplishment of sadhana. Now again, he prizes the lotus feet of Sri Guru in a more specific way. In all the scriptures, devotion to the personality of God is said to be the ultimate goal and main purpose of human life. And the scriptures and great saints are similarly of the opinion that devotion or practice cannot be commenced without taking shelter at the feet of our bona fide Guru. In his book, Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Sri Pat Rupa Goswami has described 64 items of devotion and has added that 10 of these items from the gateway into the temple of devotion. The first one are Guru Padasraya Tasmat Krishna Diksari Sikshanam Visrambena Guru Seva Taking Shetra the Peer of Sri Guru Taking initiation from him in his Sri Krishna Mantra Receiving instructions in service of the Lord and faithfully serving Sri Guru. These three are the first and foremost gateways to the path of devotion. Therefore, as one enters the gate of the temple of devotion, one must first of all take shelter of the feet of Sri Guru. For one who is not devoted to the feet of Sri Guru is deprived of devotion or attaining the Lord's grace. The Lord's grace. Just as water turns into ice when it is frozen and thus increases its quality of coldness, Similarly, when the grace of the Lord becomes dense, it becomes manifest before the devotee in the form of Sri Guru to cool the heart of the devotee, which is afflicted by the three forms of material miseries. With a stream of bhajana rasa, and blesses him with the relish of loving the Lord's lotus feet. By first saying the word Sri Guru, Srila Thakur Mahasaya indicates the Guru principle. The word Sri means the treasure of Prem. Anyone who has this treasure he is Sri Guru. Sri Bhagavad says Tasmat Gurum Prapariyata Jignasur Sreja Uttama Sabde Parecha Nishta Nishnatam Brahman Yupashama Shrayam 11.3.21 Uttamam Sreyo Jato Mikchu Sabde Brahmani Vedaki Nyayato Vyakanato Dishnatam Manyata Buddha Sanchara Yugat Parabrahma Nishta Nishnatat Badu Takama Hopasama Srayamiti Sridharatika He who decides to learn about the most auspicious devotional principles should take shelter of the feet of Sri Guru who knows the scriptures and who has practical experience of God through his practice of devotion. If Sri Guru Deva does not know the truth, he cannot erase the student's doubts about bhajana matters. And if he is not devoted, he cannot infuse bhajana experience into his student. One may ask here, we can understand whether Sri Guru knows the truth when we see his scholarship. But devotion is a certain mentality. How can a Staraka learn whether Sri Guru has devotion or not? The answer to this is Upasamasrayam. He has fully subdued the six enemies of devotion, lust, anger, greed, etc. In this way, Sri Guru will be able to destroy different vices of this surrendered disciple that are unfavorable to his bhajano. Bless him with the gift of frame and bring him near the lotus feet of the Lord. Sri Thakkur Mahasaya says, Sri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Satma. 
Here the word charana is used in a devotional manner to worship someone, just like titles as Swami Charana or Goswami Charana. Actually, Sri Guru Charana means Sri Guru Deva. The word Padma indicates that just as the lotus is the abode of honey, Sri Guru Deva is similarly the supreme shelter of Kebala or pure devotion. Kebala Bhakati Satma, defining the hallmarks of Kebala or pure devotion. Shrimad Rupa Goswami Pad has written Anya Vilasita Sunya Yana Karma Dana Ritama Anu Kulena Krishna Anu Silanam Bhakti Rutama. The definition of devotion is that it is free from ulterior desire, like reaping the fruits of devotion of, of fruitive activities and non dualistic knowledge, and is solely performed for Krishna's pleasure. The word Anu Silana is derived from the root verb Seel or Silana. And there are two kinds of silana or practice, pravriti, rules, and nivriti, prohibitions. The first one consists of physical and verbal activities and a loving mentality. In other words, practical service conducted with the body, glorifications of the Lord, activities and attributes conducted with the voice, hearing conducted with the ears, meditation on the Lord's forms, attributes and pastimes conducted with the mind, and maintaining a loving attitude is conducted with the heart. The prohibitions are endeavors to avoid offenses during formal worship or offenses to the holy name when, their endeavor, when these endeavors are conducted without desires for enjoyment or liberation and are merely filled with abstraction in hearing and chanting for the love of the Lord. Then that is called pure devotion. It is also designated with different words like Uttama, Paramount, Nirguna, Transcendental, Kevala, Pure. Mukya, main or chief, Ananya, exclusive, and Swarupa Siddha, accomplishment of one's divine form. Srila Thakur Mahasaya calls Sri Guru Deva Kevala Bhakati Satmo and thus defines the constitution of Sri Guru while at the same time glorifying him. Sri Guru Charano is a wonderful devotional combination of Godhead and the body, and thus he is the vessel of pure devotion both of devotion in practice and perfect love and devotion. From the lotus feet of Sri Guru, that are the abode of pure devotion, the Lord attains the pure devotional nectar of the living beings, Bhajana. By the grace of the devotional lotus feet of Sri Guru, the practitioner erases all his vices and easily accomplishes a loving attainment of the Lord. On the other hand, when one has no faith in the lotus feet of Sri Guru, or if one commits the fault of being ungrateful to him, the seed of offense is shown uh, and the bhakti or bhajana becomes dry and dead-like. Therefore, Srila Thakur Mahasaya continues by saying, Bandhan mui sabadana sane. The practitioner should carefully render service to that Sri Guru. For by doing so, all his spiritual pursuits are easily attained. Visrambena Guru Shiva Sirupa. Being aware of the principle of Sri Guru, it is imperative to engage in his service after establishing unswerving, unswerving faith in him. Sri Krishna has defined the Sri Guru principle from his own mouth to Sri Uddhava Acharya Mambiyani Yam Nava Mani Yakarichit Namartya Buddha Suyeta Sarva Deva Mayo Guru Bhagavatam 11, 17, 27. You should know the Acharya to be me, never slide or disrespect him or find faults in him, considering him to be an ordinary mortal, for Sri Guru Deva is the aggregate of all gods. The practitioner must establish full faith in these principles of Sri Guru and carefully engage in Sri Guru Deva's service, so that no kind of human conception or of the Guru can enter. Even after being engaged in Sri Guru's service for a long time, our minds, bodies and words are still engaged in so many uncontrolled activities, feelings and conduct, causing so many heavy offenses to be committed that cause so many obstacles to reaping the results of devotional service. The cause of that is that we are not fully aware of the Sri Guru principle or the rules and provisions concerning the service of Sri Guru given by the scripture so that we cannot engage in Sri Guru's service with care. Hence, Srila Thakur Mahasaya says, Bandha Mui Shabadana Shane The rules of Sri of Guru service, Guru Seva, 
are the following. The practitioner should personally bring water for bathing Sri Guru and washing his feet, massage his feet, rub his body, bathe him, anoint him with sandal poop and wash his clothes. When he sees Guru Deva coming, he should come before him and offer him prostrated obeisances with eight limbs of the body. He should personally fetch the ingredients of Guru's daily puja, such as tulasi leaves and flowers. He should daily offer the large prasada of food and drink to Sri Guru and then eat the remnants. When, when pronouncing the name of Sri Guru Deva, he should first lower the head, fold the hands and order the title as Totara Sata Sri Sri. Then utter the name of Sri Guru and then end with the titles Prabhupada or, or Vishnupat with body, words and mind. He should satisfy the Guru with sincere and innocent conduct and a pleasing, and a pleasing loving attitude. With his own wealth, body, abode, and life heirs. Bandon mui sabadon osani. The provisions are the following. Do not step over the seat, garment, bed, shoes, and other possessions of Sri Guru Deva. Never imitate the, the gait, speech, voice, or gestures of Sri Guru. Do not spread the legs, place one leg over the other thigh before Sri Guru, or point the feet him. Do not yawn, laugh loudly, spread out the fingers, say the body, sway the body, or make hands and feet, or any other limb dance in front of the Guru. Do not sit close to the Guru or before him. Do not lie down on a bed in front of Sri Guru. Do not lord it over others or chastise others in front of Sri Guru. When staying in the presence of Sri Guru, never go anywhere without his permission. Never explain the scriptures or give any initiation without permission of the Guru. Do not use any language to the Guru that sounds like an order or give him any such indication with the finger or the hand. Never use disrespectful words like give me this or take that. When something is required then pray for it humbly. Please permit me to do such and please permit me to say so. Never eat Sri Guru's food or take his belongings without permission. Never go to any place where someone slanders Sri Guru Deva or diminishes his glories. Do not look at the feet of the slander of the Guru. Tolerate the rebukes and chastisements of Sri Guru Deva and never treat him in a hostile manner. Even if he treats you in a hostile manner, in short, one should never act in such a way to the Guru that his glories are diminished or that he appears like an ordinary human being. He is Guru and Guru means heavy. He can never become light in his glories. Bandha Muisa Asani. There is another deep secret in Silata Kurmahasaya use of the words Bandam Vishabadana Sani Salakasya Gurau Bhakti Mandi Kurvanti Devata Janon Nitya Prajit Vishnu Sishya Bhakti Gurau Drubam Often the demigods confuse the intelligence of the student who is surrendered to his guru and try to diminish his devotion. The reason is that the demigods are thinking on the strength of his our extraordinary Guru Bhakti, this Guru Nishta Sadaka tries to exceed us and will certainly attain the Lord Supreme Abode. Therefore, if we can lure him away from his devotion to his Guru, he will not be able to exceed us. Alas, if the demigods are so envious to try to deem a student devotion to his Guru, then what doubt can there be that human beings that are unable to tolerate another person's excellence, that are weak in nature and blinded by the desires of spiritual things, like profit or fame, will try to do all these kind of things to diminish the student's devotion to, to his guru. Therefore, he, the student who is loyal to his guru, should take special care and with the aid of the saints and the scriptures engage himself in the devotional worship of Sri Guru's Lord Spirit. In that case, neither the demigods nor human beings will be able to diminish the guru bhakti of such a well-supported student. After this, Sri Atakuma Saya said, Jaha prasade bhai eva batari jajai krishna prapti ho yaha ho ne As a result of worshipping the lotus feet of Sri Guru Deva, who is the incarnation of the Lord's deep compassion and the abode of pure devotion, the student will attain both devotion in practice and accomplish devotion. When Sri Guru is pleased, attainment of the go of the Lord and the supreme goal of His loving service are easily accomplished. Therefore, the cessation of material suffering disappears of all good. As a mere concomitant factor, the devotee need bo not bother at all about, about liberation from the material world. For when he takes shelter of the life, boy of the 
large slow the speed the ocean of material existence becomes as insignificant as the water in a cask of print. However, the Saraka should be particularly concerned about personal vices that may endure his devotion. In the opinion of the devotional scripture, the attainment of God through the eradication of all vices has been defined as the supreme goal of human life. By Sri Guru's grace, these vices are easily destroyed and our practitioner, practitioner uh, and the practitioner will be blessed by the attainment of the Lord's greatest and brusay of grace. Trat prasad hi swaswanana pratikara dusya yatartana o parama bhagavat prasad asido chamulam bhakti sandarva. The only cause of the destruction of vices that are hard to conquer by the students' various own endeavors and of the Lord's satisfaction is the grace of Sri Guru. Silavisbana Chakrati Pad has written in his Guru Vastaka Jasya Prasadat Bhagavad Prasad or Jasya Prasadanagati Kutopi. By Guru's grace, the Lord's grace is attained, but when he is not pleased, the Supreme Goal is never attained. Si Si Prim Bhakti Chandrika. Hey!